Let's start by creating a new NER project for recipe processing. I'll add a short description and a link to the annotation guidelines. I continue by adding annotators and reviewers to my team from the Project Team tab. Now I select one of the available project templates on the Project Configuration tab. From Text Sources, I click on Name Entity Recognition Template. On the right side of my screen, I will now see a preview of the default taxonomy for the NER projects and some sample text. In order to edit this configuration, I go to the Configuration tab and I can directly edit the XML file or I can switch to the visual view where I can use the UI controls to remove labels and add new ones. I save the configuration and proceed to import a couple of tasks. On the import page, I click the file selection widget and choose a JSON file containing 40 new tasks and I click on import. From the tasks view, I can see the newly imported tasks which all have the status incomplete. This means they are all empty. No annotation or pre-annotation is available for them. I continue by clicking one of those tasks names in order to see the content of the task and start annotating it. On the labeling page, you can notice the taxonomy in the upper side of the screen and in the center the text I want to annotate or the content of the task. Let's start annotating. I activate one of the labels in my taxonomy by clicking it or by using the hotkeys. And then I select the text chunk I want to annotate. If the pages are long, it is worth saving the work from time to time so I don't risk losing it. Please notice that this task spins over three pages. I can navigate between the pages with the left and right arrows. And I can also customize the size of a page by selecting a predefined size from the drop-down or by defining a new custom size. This feature is very helpful when you have cross-page NER or relation annotations. You can easily alter the size of your page so that your annotations will be temporarily located on the same page. You create them and then you switch back to the initial view. When the annotation is finished, I submit the completion. This will fi finalize and mark it with a star, which means that this is the current ground truth that will be used for model training. In the case I change my mind and want to edit something to this completion, I clone it into an editable copy. I do the edits and then submit again. This will automatically update the ground truth assignment. Once a completion has been submitted and start, the task status will change from incomplete to submitted. We can see that in the task view. Let's fast forward to the point where all 40 tasks have been annotated and have the status submitted. As project owner, I can now train a first version of the model. Let's first check what servers are currently deployed in this annotation lab instance. I see here a pre-annotation server for radiology reports, which is using a floating license, which has been deployed by Angel 17 minutes ago. Annotation Lab is able to create multiple servers and run training or pre-annotation in parallel. The only restrictions are imposed by the actual available hardware resources. If you want to train or to pre-annotate tasks using license models or embeddings, you will need to one or several licenses. Each one of those licenses will be used by one of the servers running the license configuration. It is not the case for my example as I am using the free options. Going back to the project, I navigate to the setup page and then to the Training and Active Learning tab to train my model. I will use the open source Spark NLP and Glow 100 Dimension embeddings. I will keep the default values for all the other training parameters and press the Train button. A pop-up will ask me if I want to deploy the model after training. This means that once trained, this new model will be deployed on a new server and it will be available to pre-annotate tasks. Let me navigate to the Settings page again to see the new server created for my project. It does not use any license and it is currently training a new model. While the model trains, let's also check the model's hub page. Here I can easily discover and download over 5000 models and embeddings which are published on the NLP models hub. Once they become available on the hub, I can use them for pre-annotation in my projects or fine-tune them for my documents. Under the available models tab, I see all models downloaded from NLP Models Hub or trained via the Annotation Lab. Once the training will finish, my new model will also appear here in this page. Going back to the training screen, I can see the stage of the training process in the right side. 
If I click on the yellow button, I see in real time the logs generated by Spark NLP together with the accuracy metrics for the current epoch. This is automatically updated. When the training is finished, the status becomes green and the model is deployed for pre-annotation. It also becomes available on the model sub and I can manually download the model and use it in my Python pipelines offline. I can also rename it or remove it entirely. At this point, I can also deploy my model via the NLP server for external testing or integration via API. The deployment can be done from the model's hub page by clicking on the NLP server button. This will launch a new instance of the NLP server, which will be aware of the custom model I just trained. I select the spell to run by searching for my project name, then put in some text to analyze in the text box or upload a text or CSV file and run preview to see the results. NLP Server also offers an API endpoint that can be used to call the NLP pipelines from your existing applications and systems and analyze data at scale. The NLP Server is a turnkey solution for applying Johnson Apps NLP and OCR on your documents without writing a line of code. It is a free and easy to use tool that you can download and run on your own infrastructure with zero data sharing.